Let's get started. Okay, so what prompted today's training, guys, what prompted today's topic is what we're noticing, uh, Jason and I, is just some opportunities where we can improve on our conversion process, right? Um, and it's a combination of things. It's a combination of how are we managing our leads, right? Getting clear on like how we should be working a lead. Um, if we get a lead in our system, how should we be following up with this lead? The nature of the follow-up, how are we categorizing it? Um, what's some of the best strategies? And then even from a standpoint of like, how aggressive are we being with some of these leads, right? And what we noticed is that number one is we gotta be more aggressive with our leads, right? And we've seen some clear examples, like Jason, you jumped on a call yesterday, right? I didn't listen to the call, so we're going to listen to it today, right? So we're going to start off with like when we're following up with leads, what are we saying to these leads, right? Because I think that's making the difference right there. Like I know if I jump on some of these leads, I'm going to push to a certain level that maybe another agent may not feel comfortable pushing, right? Or they may not feel comfortable, you know, being as aggressive as maybe Jason or I. Um, and so I want to play a, a call from Jason. What did you send that to? So, so let's do the first one. Um, I played it with these guys earlier today. Can you guys oh, you already played it. Okay. Well, well, yeah, I played it for, for the people in the morning. Um, but I think what, what, what I would do is if you want to play the one, play the one from Zillow, the one that Robert's initial call, and then you can play mine through follow-up box. So you'll see the word started, and then you'll see the two calls after. And they're quick. They're like a minute each. It's okay. a total of three minutes. Okay. All right, so go into log into Zillow. Let me pull that. And then go to the inbox. This is something that I, I've I've been with you guys, but while Enrique's pulling this up, I, I think it's important to understand what, what Enrique said of being aggressive, it becomes that becomes a mindset, right? I think a lot of us were raised to be very polite, which is which is definitely awesome. But in the beginning, we have to understand like we this is you have to be in attack mode, right? This is you know. I don't know a, a, a gentle, gentle way of saying it, but you have to go after it. And the biggest analogy that I would say, or example, is imagine if you paid four hundred dollars for a lead, how aggressive would you be on that lead? How aggressive would you approach? How would you approach that lead? Yeah, right. And that's the mindset you got to take. If you gave Zillow four hundred dollars and Zillow gave you a name and phone number, and the name and phone number said, "No, I'm not interested," are you just going to hang up? You just lost 400 bucks, right? So yeah. I really want to take it from that type of mindset. And that's that's good that you point that out, guys, is because Jay, what, Jay right here. What happens naturally, guys, is since when we're getting leads from Zillow and stuff, there's really no skin in the game for anybody, right? It's all like positive upside, right, return, Right, because it didn't cost you anything to get that lead, right? What's what you're basically spending is time, right? Everyone has time, but you didn't put money out of your pocket to make the phone ring, right? So a lot of times it's human nature, and it's not pointing at anybody out, but it's human nature to get into to like say, okay, well, I will get another lead, right? Like more leads are coming, or I got a lot of leads in my CRM, or like, hey, if this guy is not really ready, you know, I'm not gonna still push and try to find the angle, or I'll push so much, but then I'll stop right there. Whereas like what Jason's saying, if you were the one paying a thousand bucks per lead per phone call, you're going to have a lot more sense of urgency on that lead. You're going to try to do every single thing possible to try to get that appointment and to try to make sure that they show up, right? Because now if you don't, you just lost money, right? Yeah. And that's human nature, guys. And as, but it's important that we remind everybody of that because if you treat every lead like that, like as if you paid money for it, then you're going to go that extra mile to convert it and that's going to increase how much money you guys make in the long run um so let's play this one and this was rob's call this is a initial call from Bell. initial call from rob right 1.799 the, the call coming in um and guys this is no knock on rob at all this is all for training this is all for bettering our process and bettering our system right thank you we're connecting you to a local agent now good morning jay yeah hi Hey, uh, my name is Robert. I'm a local agent here. I'm also a Zillow Premier agent. And uh, I've been told that you're interested in a property out here in Fremont on Bluebird Loop. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, would you like to go view the property? Is that? 
so before i go view the property of course we are interested in going view, to view the property and okay. before i do that i wanted to see at the look at, at the floor plan do you have that floor plan. Ooh, uh i may be able to get the floor plan let me um uh, let me do some digging around really quick and i can send you that is that is yeah that what if, you're... if you have the disclosure then the disclosure will probably have the floor plan uh awesome. so okay. that will be very helpful and then uh, and yeah then i can uh, let you know okay cool okay sounds good let me go ahead and uh, I, uh I'll look through the you have my email right address right uh, i'm sorry you have my email address right yes i have your email address i'll go ahead and send cool. that off to you uh as soon as i get that and then i'll give you a call back cool. okay cool thank you all right thank you perfect okay so right off the bat feedback on that call right alm so even though but here's the thing like it's easy for us to get derailed the guy called he wants a floor plan right so like our mind starts going okay let me solve this problem of floor plan but what we got to remember is that our job still on this call is alm that's still our job is alm appointment location motivation hey jai great let me see if i can get you the floor plan no problem if i'm able to get you the floor plan and you like it when do you want to go see the property? I'm back to appointment, right? So I told him I'll work on the floor plan, but I'm back to appointment. Hey, is this the only location you're looking in? Open to other locations. Hey, what'd you like about this property, right? Motivation. And so I can still help him get the floor plan, but I need to stick to what my mission is. The mission is ALM. Because if I have ALM, that's going to allow me to push the lead and take it to the next level, right? And so some of us, it's not just Rob, right? Like some of us run into that. They call, there's going to be other, things, gonna be other things that they might ask for, right? Um, when our offers do, and then like we start going to like down the offer rabbit hole and we forgot like ALM is, is the key, right? That's good. Question? Well, I'm curious is that what, I mean, isn't they're already giving you some motivation because of asking for a floor plan. There's got to be a reason for it, right? Yeah. And you probably want to dig deeper. Dig deeper, right? So I would ask questions about the floor plan. Hey, you know, what, what, you know, curious about the floor plan. Were you looking for a particular thing in the property, right? Yeah. Was there something about the floor plan that's important to you, right? Now you're going motive. That's basically motivation, right? Yeah. yeah not, then you can take it from there. Take it from there, right? Okay. Because you're keeping them on track. So now what I'm going to play is Jason as a sales manager. He's going through our leads, right? So he's spending time every day looking at what leads came in. Did they get called? He's texting some of you guys. He's messaging some of you guys. He's reassigning leads, right? So that's the other thing that I want to let you guys know. When a lead comes in, if it's a lead that came from the team, if you don't call it within a certain amount of time, we're reassigning it to somebody else. We've even set an automation in the team, just so you guys know, where if there's no contact logged from FUB, a phone call, right, uh, a text from FUB, in two days of receiving the lead, it automatically gets reassigned balloons right yeah. um that's automatic right if it's a if it's a lead that comes from the team it's going to get reassigned now jason might reassign it sooner if he sees like hey this is a hot one this guy wants to see a house today he'll try to get a hold of you if you're the agent but if you're not responding we don't want to lose that opportunity right so that's just going back to like what our lead management policy is if you get a lead you need to treat it like you just spent a thousand dollars to get that lead and if you can't What's the alternative? Let's say you're busy. You got showings, you're busy. You're, what should you do? Give it to somebody, Give it to somebody else, yeah. right? It, like, there's, no, there's, no, there's no foul, there's no punishment. Yeah. This is, again, for the team, right? It's like if you if you have too much food, well, they start giving away your food to people, right? Start like, letting other people eat. Yeah. What happens if you have too much food and you don't eat it all? <laughs> no. What happens to the food if it just sits there? It goes bad. It gets spoiled. That's the same thing with these leads, right? If you have too many leads and you're not on them, the leads go bad because when they first came in, the lead was the most motivated, right? When they decided I'm going to go online, I'm going to click on this property. I'm going to get connected to an agent. How high is the motivation scale? One to 10, it's 10, right? What happens two weeks later when no one's called them, they're back at work, they're back with life. Where's the motivation? Has it dropped? It's dropped, right? So we got to strike when it's hot. And if you can't strike when it's hot, that's there's no problem with that. That's why you have a team, right? Imagine if it was just you and then you were just losing these leads, right?
But the great thing is you have a team. You can say, hey, guys, I have this hot lead. I'm swamped right now. Can anybody jump on this? Because you already know you're going to get more leads. But that's you taking ownership of the lead and you like wanting to make sure that the best possible outcome ha happens with that lead, right? And so that's a mindset thing, guys, but it's also a policy thing that I want to make sure everybody understands. Uh, okay, so where's the follow-up call? Uh, go to the follow-up box. Okay, so follow-up boss. J.A. Chikupta. Chikupta. Okay. Keep going down. Let me share. So just FYI, like um, the picture in picture, I learned how to use this now. Like if you want to be able to share a window, but still see yourself and see everybody else, you got to do this. You got to do these three dots and you got to go picture in picture. So you go picture in picture and then you can go share which window you want to share. And now I'm on this window and you can see this little blue mark. That means it's sharing this window, but then you could see the picture up here where you can see the people that are on the, the chat with you. Just learned that yesterday. <laughs> um, okay. Scroll down, scroll down. Go down. Uh, we should go up. We should no, no, go down. I second call. Oh, go back up. Right here, Jason. Okay. Yeah. One minute call. Now let's hear Jason's call. Hello. Jay. Hey, this yeah. is uh, this is Zillow. I was calling you in regard to that uh, properly on Bluebird. You inquired yeah, on yeah. it yesterday. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, really quick. Did you guys want to see that property? Uh, which, can you tell me the address again? This is the Ardenwood one, right? This one right here is 32985 Bluebird Loop in Fremont. Bluebird Loop, Fremont. Okay. Uh, yeah. give me Did one you minute. guys want to view that property? Oh, Ardenwood, uh, 1.8 one address. Here, huh? Bluebird Loop. Okay, yes. Uh, so, can you, uh, were you able to? And what time will you be able to show? What, what time are you available, Jay? And I'm actually not available <laughs> today. So oh, okay. well, this is the thing. Yeah, I, I want to set. I want to set a time for you to see the property, I, and you just got to let me know what time so we can meet at the property. Okay, then let me get back to you then, uh, because I have uh, other people who also want to see uh, with me, right? So that's why. Okay, no, no, no. Well, I can call you back. You want me to call you back? I like, can ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes. I'll call you in ten minutes. Thank you, Jay. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Okay. So then what happened from there? So then now he called me back. He called you back. So what I, what I want to go back, let me go back really quick, guys. Yeah, let's stop there. I, I, yeah, so what I, the, what I did was I listened to Rob's call, right? And when I listened to Rob's call, I, I felt the guy was being really pushy. Like he was taking control over the conversation with Rob, right? So I'm already, for me, reading the room, I'm like, you know, when I call this guy, I'm going to have to have some authority. I'm going to have to have some confidence. Right. And I'm going to tell him how it's going to work out, how it's I'm not going to let him push me around in that scenario. And that, that's why I approach it like that. Right. I, you can hear me say, no, excuse me. Let me let me finish what I'm saying. And again, guys, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm not and guys. I'm not saying that that is my style of doing it. I'm not saying that for everyone. But for me, when I read the room, I'm looking at someone like that. Wants, you know, I'm going to have to show that I want I'm going to take control. I'm the expert. I'm the doctor. I'm the lawyer. I'm the real estate agent. I'm the guy that's licensed. You're the one in the property that I have access to. So I'm going to dictate that type of confidence and, and, and see where it goes, right? Because ultimately, I don't have anything anyways, right? If he doesn't want to see the property, I don't have anything. So why not lead with some confidence? Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me ask you guys. When you guys hear that style, right? Was that pretty straightforward? Yes or no, right? Um, who is... When you hear that, who is comfortable? Raise your hand if you're comfortable doing that, like straightforward like that. Yes. Raise your hand if you're, uh, you're well, if you're not sure. Yeah, I don't know if that's my style. Maybe that's a little too direct for me, right? Okay. And what about Keegan? Is that too direct for you? Well, I mean, because I, I saw Keegan when he listens to the call. He's like, "Ooh, oh, what do I get myself into?" Well, here's the thing. No, <laughs> here's the thing. It's not. It's not my style, right? But the nature in which you were direct is how I would have handled it too. I might've just used different words, but I would still said, Hey, look, you, I would have stayed on task. What was my task? 
right? Well, it was ALM before, right? But now we did, that we knew he liked this property. What was my task when? What was Jason's goal when he was calling? Get him to go see the property, right? Not even that. Get in front of him, right? And he had the property as the bait because that's what he inquired on. So you got to remember, you got to stick, stay on task, right? If Jason would have started going to a different area, started talking about different things, he would have got off the task. He kept it really just. We're only talking about seeing this property. We're staying in this box right here, right? And and, and you can see that I told him I was going to call him back again. I'm always trying to take control. Right? I'm not going to wait for. I'm not waiting around for him to call me back. That's not what I do. I, I'm going to call you back to call me. Uh, and then, uh, Amaya, uh, you you raised your hand. Amaya, what what was your question? Do you have a question? Yeah, yeah, Enrique. Yeah, I, I love the way Jason approached it. The tone was different. The client's tone was also different. He was more submissive. But my question was, what happened to the floor plan? He did not follow up on the floor plan. Like the client did not follow, up or he did not remember that he had asked for the floor plan. So, I don't think he had the floor plan because I'm looking at the notes. Robert, right yeah, robert yeah robert was fighting that i called robert on so i'm looking at the notes and rob put a note in does not want to view the home without the floor plan i have been in communication with them playing the nurture game called this guy back twice went straight to voicemail left voicemail and text he responded back to me later right so i made rob looked into the floor plan i don't think he had a floor plan but now this guy was playing the game where i don't want to see it right but here's the thing what i know about jason and this is something that you guys can take take from jason when Jason wants to get something, he's going to go get it, right? We all need to have that attitude. If I want this appointment, I'm going to figure out a way to get this appointment, right? I'm going to go out swinging, right? I'm not just going to give up. I'm going to, hey, because if the guy says, hey, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to see it or anything, I guarantee you Jason would have would have went next. Well, hey, you inquired on this property, 100%. right? You came in on Zillow. You asked for a floor, pl floor plan. So you, you're interested, right? So why don't we take a look at it? Jason would have insisted that they take a look at it. Because remember, the goal was to get in front of the client. Once you get in front of the client, then we can wow them with our presentation, our value, all these different things. But what was the game that we were playing? It's get in front of the client, right? So we got to remember that, guys. This is sales process, right? We got to play the game. The game is get in front of them. Once you get in front of them, you bring out all the tools and the bells and the whistles, right? Yeah. And then you can hear the call. He called me back. Okay, so now he called you back. I like this. All right. Hey, uh, are you available 545? Let me go ahead and 545. I'll make it happen, Jay. I'll have one of my agents 545 at the property. I'll confirm that it's available. I'll call you right back. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Short and sweet. All right. Um, uh, Okay, so now this is Rob calling him back. So what happened? So what ended up? So what ended up happening? So what ended up happening was Rob wasn't available. Okay. To take him, so he set up with Mark, right? And Mark, you gotta correct me if I'm wrong, but and Mark was getting heading out there, but Mark was gonna be a little behind because because it was just I mean that call was made at four thirty, <laughs> right? The guy five forty five. <clears throat> so. I, I don't know if they rescheduled or what, what they did, but, but Mark was saying, hey, if you wouldn't be able to make it, it would be like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes late. Okay. So we, we didn't end up meeting them, right? Uh, so what's the plan now with this client? Got to follow up. I, it sounds like there's multiple people buying. Okay. Um, what Just kind of going back, what am I, my big takeaway with this, guys, is that you we can't just we, we have to call them multiple multiple times right? yeah i mean there's no there's nothing else there's no magic that i said or did anything it's just that i i got a hold of them at a certain time right and that time was at 4 30. so what i would go back to when you're looking at your leads and this is something we talked about this morning is that you don't just call once right you got to call once twice and then maybe send a text and then we can probably go in more detail on that. But my big takeaway from these leads that I called a few more was they just need to be called a lot of times. So <laughs> I'm gonna do something because I think this is this is fun here. I'm gonna go on chat GPT. So we'll see what chat GPT has to say. I like chat chat GPT. You can ask it anything. So on average. How many calls 
texts and interactions within online lead does it take to set an appointment what does it say <laughs> On average, it typically takes six to eight calls, four to six text messages, and five to 12 interactions, including email, social media messages with an online lead to set an appointment. This can vary depending on the quality of the lead, the response to the lead, and the systems in place for follow-up. A key factor is persistence. Consistent follow-up over time, as most online leads may not be ready to act immediately, but maintaining communication increases the chances of converting them into an appointment. So right. if you don't believe Enrique, if you don't believe Jason, believe Chat GPT. <laughs> right? Okay. I didn't make this up, okay. right? <laughs> no, also, so, yeah, so on average, six to eight calls, four to six texts, five to twelve interactions. Let's just pick a wild number there. Eight, ten, right? Ten, right? It's definitely at least eight. It's definitely at least seven. And it's up to twelve. So I'm gonna go in the middle, eight, nine, 10, right? So here's what you gotta ask yourself. If I get a lead and I haven't called them, text them, emailed them at least 10 times, I have not done my job of trying to squeeze every juice of opportunity out of that lead, right? Mm -hmm. We got a lot of leads coming in guys where they're only getting called one time. They're getting, right, the lead comes in, they call on the initial one. Think about it though, I wanna, I wanna know why, right? I think part of it is maybe there's some people don't know it takes that many calls, but then there's some people that are just super busy and they're not managing their pipeline effectively. Right. And so they're not remembering that part of our job is to make sure we are calling these leads over and over and over and over again until they say, stop calling me yeah. or until they book an appointment. Right. And, and, and let's, let's, dive, let's dive deep into that a little bit, Enrique. Let's really understand like why we're not doing it, right? And I like what Enrique said. One is, you know, maybe we didn't know that it takes eight to ten times. Two, we may be too busy, right? So that, that that's one way of looking at it. The other part that I wanted that I want to look at is is that when when because I get a lot of agents coming and say, Jason, I want more leads. I want more leads, which I understand. So what I'm looking at, when I'm looking at this, is now I want you guys as agents to do an audit to say, hey, did I call by eight to ten times? Right? Then I called eight to ten times. Now it's not, it's okay if the if the client says like this, I am not interested, you know, don't call me, whatever it may be. One of my lines that I like to use, hey, hey, I totally understand. Sure, you're not interested that you know that you know you're gonna hold off, but I just wanna I wanna make sure that I notate my CRM. And I properly follow up with you. So I just want to understand what is going to get you to participate in the market? Yeah. What's going to get you to participate in this market? And the reason why I'm asking Enrique is so that I can notate my system and we can follow up accordingly. Is that okay, Sharif? Yeah. Does, does that sound fair? Awesome. Let me go ahead and do that. Yeah. Right? I'm going to show you guys a couple. Um... Does anybody remember who Matt Smith is? Matt Smith's a team leader. I posted some of his stuff. He's a big team leader at EXP. He's a coach. He coaches with Chet Black. He's actually one of the coaches on Chet Black's staff. Um, he did a mastermind this past week of what it takes to succeed in today's market. He's like based in Missouri, I think. But his average agent on his team is doing like four to five deals a month, right? Brand new agents too, right? Four to five closings a month. Um, Two big things that he shared. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share them here. Really, really good guy. We coached with him before. Yeah. In a, in a group setting, and Rick and I, uh, I think like maybe a couple years ago, two years ago, right? Yeah. Really, really cool guy. Um, but one of the things he said it was super simple. And let me see if I can pull it up here. Oh. I took a picture of it. And I think I posted it on Instagram. What's he said? Let me see. Let me make sure you guys can see this. I think when you guys are on the lead, I mean, the biggest thing I would always be doing is uh, making sure once 
that contact is over, or whether if you left a message, you didn't get a hold of another, you schedule an another appointment yeah, right then and there. Another call. Yep. yep. Whether if it's the same day at a different time or the following day. And keep doing that until. I think that, you know, and I think a lot of times we get in our own head, guys, that we're bugging the client. Right? Yeah. I kind of want to, I want you guys to get that out. We're not, this is, they inquired, guys. They, 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 they filled out an app, they, they filled out five questions on Zillow. They're expecting our call, right? Or, or our ISA has reached out to this client and asked them a handful of questions. That's why I got shot into your follow-up boss because they're anticipating your phone call. Yeah. So what he said, guys, is agents, you don't need to call more leads. You need less, you need to call less leads more. <laughs> One more time. Agents, you don't need to call more leads. You need to call less leads more, right? And the point he's trying to make is that and what he said is most agents, a lot of them have too many leads in their pipe, right? So he's like, a big thing that we've done this past year that has increased our conversion is we took leads away from agents. We created a policy now where you can only have a maximum of 100 leads in your CRM. If you have more than 100, you got to get rid of some. 100's the limit. He goes, and when we did that, now my agents were going in and cherry picking which leads that they thought were good that they deserve to be followed up with. And the ones that they just don't have no clue, they just threw them back in the pond, right? And so what happens is now if I could only have 100 leads, then I'm going to follow up with these leads more often naturally because I only can work with 100, right? And so that's that's the pitfall, right? Of You're on a team. It's the great thing you're on a team and you're a great thing you're getting leads. But we, when you have too many, then this is what happens. We're watering down the conversion, right? We're watering down the follow-up. And so I'm proposing that we take the same concept and we just go through everyone's CRM and we get rid of leads. Now leads, leads don't include like your past clients and closing, right? These are like opportunities you are chasing, right? Um, open house leads, online leads, referrals, anything like that, but a hundred leads in your database. If we put that rule out, probably like half the leads will be taken out of your CRM. Cause I know there's people in here right now that have like over 200, right? Um, and so I like this, guys. It's really simple. And what I like about Matt is that the reason he is successful is he keeps it very simple. Like he doesn't do like anything crazy. He's just like, we just bug the crap out of the leads and, until they they get on or they get off, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Um, he also talked about this. This was the this is what I want to show. Fifteen hour work week. I thought this was a cool concept. Who would like to only work fifteen hours and close a lot of sales? Okay. 15 hour work week, right? Um, just disclaimer, you're probably going to work more than 15 hours, but he designs it in a way, right? It's how he delivers the message. But if you just do this, right, for 15 hours, do these five things daily, five days a week, and not only will you survive, you will thrive. Um, number one is 15 minutes to educate yourself on the market every single day. 15 minute huddle with your team or coach, public declaration of your daily commitment. So this could be like our morning role play where instead of us just doing role play, we only spend, cause we're doing like 30 minutes, right? Okay. Um. So yeah, 15 minutes real quick. What's happening in the market, right? This way now you're warmed up. You know what's right. Maybe what new listings came on? What's the inventory? Where's the rates are? That's quick. Uh, and he said, you could even do this shorter. It just depends if you're on a team. So 15 minutes if you're on a team and there's a bunch of people. Yeah, he goes, if it's just you, like it could be like five minutes on each of those two. 15 minute huddle with the team where you're going to declare what your commitments are for the day. Hey, today, guys, I got to book two appointments and I got to go show this buyer and I got to get an offer in submitted. That's my goal today, right? Very simple, right? But what you're doing is you're setting the intention for the day of this is what I'm after. And what happens when you do public declaration, right? What happens when you do public declaration? Are you more likely or less likely to do it? More, right? Because like you're coming in and you're not gonna lie to everybody. Hey guys, I'm booking 12 appointments. I'm kind of lying, right? Like, no. Like if you say, hey, I'm booking two appointments and you're letting us know, then that's what probably what you're gonna do, right? But the fact that you're saying it and you're putting it out there, you're putting yourself in line and you're setting the intention of what's gonna happen. 30 minutes of role play. This could be practicing our scripts. I think we could condense this part into maybe 30 minutes. One hour prospecting, one hour follow up. That simple, right? Um, 
prospecting could be new business, right? You're chasing new leads or you're going in the pond or you're calling these new open house leads that you got from this weekend. Follow up is actually following up with those people that are in your pipeline, the hundred that you got, right? Making the sixth, seventh and eighth call to them, making the 10th call or the 10th text message um, so that you could convert them. Who thinks this is easy, guys? Is this easy like when it's mapped out like this? But what I want you guys to, to, to take away from this, guys, is there's no, there's no magic pill, right? There's no magic pill. It's if, if you can do this consistently five days a week, your business is going to boom, right? But if you do it one day and then the next day you don't come in and the next day you didn't do it in the morning because you went to the dentist, you know, or the next day, like you did a showing in the morning, therefore you skip prospecting and follow up. Now you're not you're not consistent. So that leads to another thing that we talked about on that podcast recently is how are you designing your day? Right? Um let me get out of this. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how are you designing your day, right? Now, here's the thing. When I'm rec making recommendations of how you should design your day, I already know what's going to go through people's head. Well, I'm self-employed, guys. Like, I make my own schedule. Great, you do, right? Yeah. But then the question I got to ask you is, is the schedule that you are making allowing you to remain consistent, accountable, and hit your goals on a consistent basis, right? Because you can be of you can be of the mindset like, hey guys, like I don't need you to tell me when I gotta be here. I don't need you to tell me what I gotta do. I'm self-employed, right? I do what I want. Great, you're an adult, you should do what you want. But then we already know like when it's up to us to do what we want, naturally, what do humans do? Easy. Slack. We do what's easier, we do what seems easier, right? Like, and that's where accountability comes into play, right? Like today, I have to be here to do training. This is my accountability right here. I've committed to the team that every Tuesday and every Thursday, I will host sales meeting and I will host training. That, like, I can say, hey, I'm the CEO. Like, I don't need to freaking be here, I, you know. But by me doing that and putting that in my schedule, it forces me to be here every Tuesday and every Thursday. And when I'm going to do training, what do I have to do before training? I got to prep for training. Therefore, I'm going to be here at least an hour before, right? If not sooner, because I know I got to prep and I got to bring up my A game, right? And so what happens is when you put these things into your daily routine, it creates a, a path that you can follow every single day, right? And it's when we follow things every single day that creates consistency and consistency leads to consistent results, right? And so if you want your business to go up and down, up and down, up and down, one good month, one bad month, one good month, one bad month, then just kind of free, freestyle it. Wing it, yeah. right? But if you want a consistent result, you should have a consistent routine, right? And it, it, those two can't happen. I don't know anybody, guys, who gets who has a consistent result in some area of their life, in their fitness, in their finances, in their relationship, whatever it might be, that doesn't have consistent things that happen on a daily basis. If you want abs, you got to be consistent in the gym and consistent with your diet and your cardio. There's no excuses, right? If you want to book consistent appointments, well, you got to consistently be prospecting. I know this is very simple, guys. It is, yeah. But but it's something that I've realized over time, right? 20 years in the business now, like that is what has caused the success that we've had. It's not anything magic. It's just like we do it more consistent than the average person, right? This, I just want to add to it because I had a one-on-one -on -one with Deb, right? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes, you know, as agents. We don't know, you know, we don't know what it looks like. We don't know what the result looks like, right? So we're saying be consistent, be consistent. But I think we also, as leaders, as managers, as you know, you guys and your team to show you guys what the result is by being consistent, Enrique. Yeah. Right. By being consistent, that's how you build your business. By being consistent, that's how you're going to get those two million dollar listings that's how you're going to get the opportunity to go show that 1.5 million dollar buyer but it starts with being consistent 
And I think right now, we kind of kind of expanded on that, Deb, right? Because we talked about it. Maybe you can explain a little better. But that was something we talked about today where it's like, Jason, I, I just can't see it, right? It's like if I went to the gym one day and I'm like, dude, I don't look like that guy. But yeah, you only went one day, right? But if I went to the gym for fucking a year, then you're going to see the result. It's the same thing in our business. It's that you can't just say, well, I tried it for two weeks. I tried it for two months. I tried it for three months. You got to try You got to do this for a year to see those type of results. Yeah. Right. And I think that that's, it's hard for us to show you something because it's going to take progress. And then you, by the end of the year, you're like, holy shit, I, I closed four or five deals. You got Sharif in the business for, I don't know, 10 minutes and he's already closed four deals. I right. I posted a video from Kobe guys the other day on my chat. I was watching an interview with Kobe. One of the last interviews he did with Jay Shetty like four years ago. And everybody obviously knows Kobe Bryant is, right? But he explained like his thought process or his mindset behind success. And I thought he worded it really, really well. So I want to play it for you guys. How did you get that mentality? You just being like, I need to get over this. Like I need to get over myself. You know, trial and error, you know, you grow up and you make game-winning shots and it's awesome. And you come back the next day and miss a game-winning shot and it's misery. And then the next day comes and you're back playing again. And you understand that life has this cyclical nature where it's, you know, what you do on one day, it's fantastic. But then Tuesday is a bad day. But guess what? There's Wednesday. Yeah. So are we just supposed to live our lives like this the whole time? <laughs> you know, versus just staying like this and understanding that it's really just a journey of, evolution every day it's just constant improvement constant curiosity constantly getting better the results don't really matter uh it's the figuring out that matters yeah and we will get to work so what he's saying guys is that because the guy at the question was like when you win a bunch of times and then you lose like how do you deal with that right because some of us have had great months some of us have had not the best months some of us had a good years not not the best years right but what he's saying is that you have to just, you can't live your life on an up and down thing where I'm up and then I'm down, I'm up and I'm down. He says instead, like, because that's no way to live your life, right? When you're on your high, low, high, low, high, low, that's very stressful. That's very chaotic. Um, you can't maintain that. So he's saying you have to just like understand that every day you show up, it's just about constant curiosity, constant tweaking, understanding that you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days, but you just got to keep showing up, right? That's, that's the main thing. And he says, detach yourself so much from the result, right? Which we've heard Cheplak say, and just get really, really obsessed with the process, right? The process. Like if I got a lead, I just got to be obsessed that I got to call this guy 10 times, right? And whether he does business with me or not, that's going to be the byproduct of me consistently calling people 10 times. And if I just call more people 10 times each, I will get more wins in the process. You guys see that versus just focusing on like, oh, this guy doesn't want to work with me. This person doesn't, they ghosted me, whatever. It's no, I got to get, I just got to get dialed in my process, right? I got to get committed to the daily, the daily tasks, right? The, the routine. Um, but I like how he worded that guys, because Kobe is arguably one of the best basketball players ever, right? To ever live, right? Um, but even he like thinks about it that way, right? Yeah, I think it's, uh, and I, you know, again, guys, I, you know, I know this is, this is more like a lot of mindset and we're also putting some leap policy in, but I want you guys to also, you know, when I'm doing these one-on-ones with you guys, I noticed like we all need accountability, right? And we could kind of talk about how, you know, he's held accountable by us because he has to, he has to perform Tuesday and Thursday. And I want you guys to understand we are part of this team because if, if you're part of this team, we can create that accountability, a healthy accountability, right? an accountability where we can all thrive and i think it's important for us to come together and, and if you guys need that account like i can't work from home guys i don't have an office i gotta work on my kitchen table i got my dog i got the amazon guy i got all kind of got you know big tv right so i can't work from home. i'm holding myself accountable by being here with you guys right so i want you guys you know while we're going through this and this last quarter of, of the year Think about if you guys want that level of accountability, I will play that game with you. I know Enrique will play that game with you. And if you don't want to play the game with me, I know someone else in this office will, right? And this is the way you're going to level up. It's like going to the gym and getting someone to, to, to spot you or a workout partner, right? That's what we can do here as a team, guys. And this is, we got to push. And there's a great opportunity right now in the market. Um, I was listening to Tom Ferry this morning. There's something called the Teams Report that just came out. Actually, 
he was explaining it. I haven't got a chance to actually look at the report, so I'm going to pull it up with you guys right now. Um, so what they did, I actually took a survey. They did a survey on the, uh, they surveyed the top team leaders. I think like, I don't know how many thousands of leaders. This was like a few uh, months back. I filled out the survey. It took like 30 minutes to fill it out. They asked me questions about our team size, our annual production, our follow-up systems, all these different things. And what they're doing is they're surveying teams across the U.S. and then they're compiling data and they're seeing like what teams are doing to win, where teams are lacking and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to we're going to look through that. But there was a couple of things he talked about in the episode today. That I think we can take away from. Uh, OK, here we go. No, it's making me. Survey, click here for the team's report top takeaways. Who did this? I'm sorry. Tom Ferry. Tom Ferry, okay. This is the one you sent me, right? Mm hmm. I haven't looked at it yet. Okay, receive takes 30 seconds. Team leader, how many agents? We'll say 20, 25. So say 20. My name. You want to try to market me something? It's all good. Oh, last name. Should arrive in the next 10 minutes. Let me see. If it's not here, guys, then we'll skip this. Um, no, okay. I'm not going to go through my whole email with you guys. Um, but I heard the episode today, and one of the big things that he pointed out was he said from being a brand new agent to actually getting up and running where you're like producing at a good level, it takes on average, based off their team's report, three years. Three years, right? Because the first year, you're like learning all the new shit. It's all like, it's very, very new, right? Um, and the person that's going to explain this even better, I want to show. Do you guys see anybody watch that video I posted yesterday? Mario. Oh, Mario. Yeah. Okay. Mario. This is a great example, right? Mario Bayona, buddy of ours. He's in financial services, uh, World Financial Group. I think they're now GFI or something. Um, but Mario, I met him when he first started 17 years ago, right? He got into sales basically right they sell insurance and stuff similar to our business right yeah. they got to go out there and and you know sell sell product mario 17 years ago i think he was born in mexico originally yeah. right very broken english right they didn't speak that good he was like an assistant he was on a team basically right kind of like like a lot of us here and he was learning the game he was learning leadership he was learning sales and all that stuff um this last six months in his business he made over 1.5 million in the last six months in year 17, right? But when he first started, like I did not think when I met him, he's a cool guy, right? Yeah, yeah. I did not think this guy was gonna turn out and be like what he is, right? He's the leader of an organization. He has like, I don't know, hundreds or maybe thousands of people under him. He speaks on stages now. He's like a freaking top you know, leader within the company. And now he's bringing in incomes of in the millions, guys, right? Um, but he, what is that thing at? I posted it yesterday. Did I know him, guys? Because he, his, um, I met him. We've known him for many years, but I actually got to hang out with him a couple of weeks ago. He, um, his, my neighbor, he's married to someone within my, my neighbor's family. So we helped him even with his property. I helped him get a loan originally when he bought his house. Yeah, yeah, he's really, really good, good guy. Yeah, it's great to see his transition. Yeah, and I'm like.
fire right there. Uh, That's so that. dope to see, guys, because yeah. just because I know him personally, Ryan, just seeing where he came from. And when I saw when I saw that video, I'm like, that lit me up, right? Because it's so true. Like you said, in the beginning, that awkward stage, it's a lot of what a lot of people go through, right? There's some of you guys that are going through the awkward stage right now, right? Some of you guys have gotten past the awkward stage a little bit. And now you're in that mechanical stage. Okay, you know what to do. Now it's following the stuff. And then eventually when you do it long enough, you now become a natural, right? And he says a lot of people look up to him now. 17 you're like oh you're so dope and he's like dude like i i wasn't that dope in the beginning right so i like that he's still you know a little yeah. humble right and he still tells you about his journey um but just seeing like how much success this guy's having i'm like it just goes to show like you just got to keep going right you got to keep going and so just remember that guys like wherever you're at in your journey right now some of you guys haven't done it long enough right which stage which stage would you guys say you're in right now which stage you think you're in Awkward transitioning into mechanical. Okay. Which stage are you in? Beginning premature, maybe. I don't know. Awkward, right? <laughs> yeah. Which stage are you in? 1.5. 1. 5. My. Which stage are you in? Mechanical? Three. Which stage are you in? Did you see that video? Oh, I don't know. You stepped up. Awkward stage, mechanical stage, or the natural stage? Oh, I'm natural. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Mark. Center of professional sales product knowledge. Yeah. So I think I still I have the sales skills, but I'm still learning the industry. So there you go. Okay. Okay. What stage do you think Jason, Steve, and I are in? Mechanical? Natural? Level above that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But I, but I, I want you guys to see, right? Like you guys are all in different stages. Some of you guys are awkward. Some of you guys are transitioning to mechanical. Some of you guys are now in natural, but it's part of the journey, right? And so you got to remember like how you think right now, as you go more into the business, you're going to think about your business in a different way, right? And what we're trying to do is just like show you the cheat codes. We're trying to get you there faster. That's why you met partner with us. That's why we're your mentors because we've already seen it. We've already done the trial and error. We already know what works and what doesn't work, right? And so if you take direction from someone who's at a level, you know, or higher than where you wanna be, they're gonna be able to say, okay, this is the mistake I made. I had to do it all over. I would do it this way, right? Yeah, and so- I'll, and I'll, I'll put a, like you said, that, uh, when I started with Jason and Enrique, uh, I was more in the mechanical. I know I can do what I do. You know, I'm good at what I do as far as the loan pro the loan part of it. But I didn't have the process in place. Mm -hmm. Learning the process and how to to um, bring or uh, stay on point with clients has taken me to that next level. And now it's more natural. Yeah. And you're even even starting to get more natural right social media and i've been and i've been doing this for 20 years yeah so you're this is this is probably going to be my best and you're that's all right let's give it up for that guys right and, he's putting the work out. and and not only is he putting the work but he's remember what he said about the reps right the difference between that awkward and the natural stage is not how much time it's how many reps you put in right because you can you can shrink that timeline, right, by doing more in the in a shorter amount of time. And so that's up to you guys, right? Like how fast do you want to get to that mechanical or the next stage or the natural stage? It's really up to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you guys one real quick example. I have a real good friend, he's a firefighter in Oakland, right? He's been a firefighter for the last I don't know, 18 years. So he gave me an example of him being a firefighter in Oakland for one year versus someone being a firefighter in, in Gilroy for 20 years. Right. So being he's got so much reps, he got so much action in one year as a firefighter in Oakland versus someone maybe in Gearway, but over in 20 years, they wouldn't get that much that many reps. Right. So when I look at this environment here, and this and this is and that's why I love what that Steve led with that, is because here you can get reps. Why? Because we have the leads, we have the training, we have the opportunity. Get your freaking reps in right yeah that's it get your rep and that's what steve steve's getting tons of reps why because he has all these agents in here and then he has agents outside of here so his rep his reps have just increased right and yeah. then he got him to be sharp 
And I, I think um, we're always we're coming up on time, guys. But one of the things too that Matt Smith was saying in his in his mastermind was as the market started to shift, a lot of people are talking about, oh, the market's shifting, right? Like we got to survive and stuff like that. And he goes, dude, like, why am I trying to survive? He goes like, I don't care what the market's doing. I'm going to find ways to thrive. I'm going to find ways to win, right? Just because like everybody else is not doing so good, like that becomes like a blanket mentality that people have, right? Or that's hard. And even the words that we say, right? Oh, it's hard right now. Oh, it's too competitive. I sometimes find myself saying that. I need to change that shit, right? Sometimes it comes out of our mouth, right? It's freaking hard to get listings right now. It's hard to get buyers in contract, but that's really a mindset thing, right? So I'm, that's something I'm going to work on. I'm just calling myself out right now is we got to speak into existence, like the vision that we want to have, right? It's easy to get buyers in contract. It's easy to get uh, listings. It's easy to get appointments set when I'm doing the work to back it up. Right. And that's the asterisk right there that you got to add. Right. It could be easy for you as long as you're doing that work. And so today, guys, was. Is today's uh, training was really more of a reminder, guys. There's nothing new, I think, right now that we're going to teach you. Like we know, like who knew that you got to call at least 10 or 12 times, guys. Raise, like it was fun to do chat GPT. OK, great. That was cool. We yeah. had a good laugh. But who already knew that? Raise your hand if you already knew that. Okay, yeah. raise your hand if you, if that was brand new. Like, oh, I didn't know you had to call that many times. One person, two maybe. I, I was thinking, but yeah, it's called participation risk. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, so it's good, right? It's, Out of the room. It's just calls. It's, it's, it's total contacts, contacts, right? Texts, calls, and then it's constantly being in front, and it's and it's a short amount of time too, you not know, spread out over a month. You know, you're talking. Yeah. And then the first two weeks. Yeah. That first two weeks when the lead comes in is when clients have the highest motivation because they, they just clicked. They just inquired. They just came to the open house, wherever the lead comes from. They just got referred to you. That's when the motivation is the highest. So you got to seize that moment, right? That's where you got to be all over them, all over them until you can qualify them and then say, okay, now they belong in this bucket or they belong in that bucket, right? You're going to get two things. Either you're going to get them to get committed or they're going to tell you to, they're not ready. They're not ready. So, which is fine. You want to know that. And when will they be ready? And then you get them on, on that on that nurturing. Here's a good question that um, Matt Smith, and I want you guys to write this down or, or, yeah, write this down somewhere. He says, a great question that I say to people that he coaches his agents is, what's the next step that has to happen for you to buy your next home or get your home listed? He asked the client that, right? And it's a trick question, right? Because a lot of them don't know what the next step is, right? Or if they do know what the next step is, then that's his opportunity to insert himself into that next step, right? So for example, let's yeah. role play real quick with Jason. Jason, that buyer, right? Jay or whatever, you're, yeah. you're Jay now. So, hey, Jay, um, I know you don't have time to see the home today, but what's the next step for you to that you have to do in order to start buying a home? I need, I need to find the right property. Okay, great. So it sounds like you need to find the right property. That's probably the next thing that's important on your list, right? Okay, great. So when can we set a time to actually go see a home? I have time tomorrow or the next day, four or six, which works for you. All right. Yeah, let's 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 um, let's let's do four o'clock tomorrow. Okay. okay. So you see how like by me asking him, what's the next step? Instead of me telling him, hey, this is your next step. I asked him. He told me and now I'm showing him how I can be the solution or insert myself into that next step. Good. Let's role play for a seller, right? If I'm calling a seller, yeah. you're a seller, right? Hey, um, Deb. Um, what do you think the next step is for you to, you know, get closer to getting your home listed on the market? The number has to be right. The number has to be right to sell. The number has to be right. So it sounds like understanding what your home could sell for and maybe how to get that number that you're looking for. That's probably the most important thing. Yeah, we need that. We need that one for one. Okay. So here's what we should do. Here's what I recommend. Um, when I come by the house, we'll take a look at the house. I'm going to go over the data and we're going to see if that number is there. And I'll also give you a proven plan on how you can get closer to that number, right? Because that's the next step, right? We got to see if the numbers are realistic for you. Okay, great. I have time this day or that day, right? So you see, like, put it back on them. What's the next step for you to move forward, right? I like that. I, I've never heard anybody yeah. do it that way, um, right? But it's it's just a different way to get that answer. And then you become the person that's going to help them do that. And that's very similar to the way that Rob trains us. Right, Rob, and I'm the opposite. I'm telling them what the next step is. Rob's doing that other way, right, right, Deb, where he's he's asking them, like basically asking them to give them the answer. 
Yeah. Right. So, so it, it, I like that. I like think, it a lot. Think about the psychology behind that, right? If I ask Jason what the next step is, who thinks they have control in this, right? Yeah, I, I do. Right. right? Like I'm that. giving him control, but really I'm controlling because I asked the question, right? I asked the question on purpose to get him to feel like he has control, and then I'm gonna know, right? But when he thinks he has control and he's calling the shots. Well, he's not going to be wrong against himself. If he said the next step is to find the right home, and I'm saying, okay, let's go look at homes. He's not. He's he couldn't. He can't contradict himself at that point, right? Yeah. He can't go. No, I don't want to look at home. Well, you didn't you just say the next step is to find the right home, right? You see how there's like some psychology in there, right? It's 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 not just asking the question. It's the reasoning why you ask it that way. So I want you guys to try that, right? As you're following up with these people, that twelve times or 10, 10 times. Each time, ask them, what's the next step? What's the next step for you to get closer to buying your home? What's the next step for you to get closer to selling your home? And then from there, you can set the next follow-up, the next appointment, the next call, the next whatever has to happen, right? But you're getting the words from their mouth, basically. Yep. Um, okay. What else? I think this is it for today, guys. The last thing I want, to, Enrique, if you can just end with making sure you guys are doing all activity through follow-up one, yeah. right? You see how Enrique was able to do some training on this? Because the next step, guys, I want you guys to give us your top call, right? I want you guys to say, hey, you know, I want, I want you guys to listen to this. Let's do some training on this call here, right? So all activities have to be done through follow-up boss so we can do that. And then we can hold you guys accountable to your guys' To your guys' goals and what actions you guys are taking on a daily basis. Well, let's show you something real quick. The cool thing about follow-up boss is it has reporting, right? So we can go to agent activity. And I can see how many leads came in, let's say in the last 30 days, right? So in the last 30 days, 185 leads came in. What's cool though is I can see how many leads were not acted on? I don't want to see this number. Read that number to me, uh, Antonio. No, what? read the category and the number of leads. Or, louder so everyone could hear. Okay. Leads not acted on 35. Leads not called on 34. Leads not emailed on 10. Okay, so that means that 185 leads came in from different sources. You guys could have entered these leads, yeah, right? Open. They could have came from Open House. They could have came from Zillow. They could have came from our ISAs. These leads entered our system, right? Our ecosystem in the last 30 days. 35 were not acted on. Acted on is a call was made from the system, text was made, right? Overall acted on, right? And then what I could do is I can see. For each person, 12 leads, eight not acted on, 26, seven not acted on. Um, I don't really count, just FYI, guys. I'm on some of your guys' stuff for some reason. 18, five, but you can see 74 leads not called, meaning there was no call logged in the system, right? Yeah. Whether you logged it as a call or where you made the call straight from follow up boss, out of 185, 74 of them didn't get a call. And see, guys, remember, remember, we looked at the, the chat GPT said eight to ten times. Those weren't even called once. Now we could probably go further back. Which ones have been called eight to ten times? No, that number is going to be huge. So that that just tells us that we need to go back to our. We don't need more leads. Well, we need to call those leads from follow up. Or or you, we're not calling through follow up. Box. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, I'm taking that out of the equation now, okay, guys. Yeah. I'm just assuming we're not calling because this is. Yeah, well, that's why I said we yeah. have to no, but the point is, do we have to call from here, guys? The reason why I want us to call, remember, guys, we're paying for this, so let's utilize the tools. Let's utilize our tools that we're paying for. Okay, right. so let's look at this stat. How many times we tried to contact each lead? 185 leads on average contact attempts, meaning a call was logged, a text was logged, 3.68. Okay. Way too low. Let's get this, let's just be real, right? How many times does it take? Eight to 10. We said eight to 10, at the minimum, eight to 10. We're saying 10 is the number. Let's use 10, that's an easy number to remember. On average, we're under four. So remember, if you have a juice, uh, a, a lemon, and you wanna get more juice out of it, what do you do? You squeeze it more. You get that last little drop of juice, right? 
You ever have those lemons where you squeeze the crap out of it and then you oh, squeeze a little more, right? And you get that little last little drop. That's how you got to look at your leads, right? Average call attempts, 1.14 of calls being logged from the system. Now, I know what you guys say. Well, maybe I called from my phone, but I didn't log it in. Okay. So, remember, if we have to measure stuff, right? Because whatever gets tracked and measured can grow. You can scale what gets tracked and measured. You cannot scale when you're winging it or when you're not measuring stuff. If I wanted to lose weight and I never stepped on the scale, how would I know if I'm losing weight? I wouldn't, right? I need a measure, right? Weighing myself every single day is the, is the measurement. I have an app, guys. Like when I'm like dieting and stuff, I track my weight every single day. It gives me averages and all. It's same concepts, right? But if we're not logging the call from the system, you're not getting credit from your work. Now, this number right here, I guarantee you guys, if we doubled this number, if we went from four on average, right, we rounded up to four to eight, we would close more deals. That's it. It would go up. Call attempts. If it went from one and that went to five, right, because this is total probably contacts, right? Contact yeah. attempt is an email call or text message. If this, this is good. I want, I want to make sure this is positive, guys. I want I want you to understand the positive. When I look at this, it's positive. You know why? Because there's room for improvement. Oh, I look at this as a challenge. Yeah, we, right? we, have, we have the leads, guys. Now it's like, oh, it's a fucking good. challenge. All right, put now, me now in. We the, know the rules, right? Yeah. It's like, I feel bad that I didn't tell you guys the rules. I, now we're telling the rules. Hey, eight to 10, con 10 contacts on each lead. Just do that for every lead. You'll, you're going to see a conversion go. And if you, if you try to contact eight to 10 times and they're not responding, put them in the pond. throw them in the pond. Get rid of them. Get that out of your thing. Yeah. And go back to that other person that is responding, right? Don't keep the lead. That's the attitude we got to have. I'm going to squeeze every drop. And if they're not responding in those first two weeks, after I hit them up 10 times at least, that's not my lead. Yeah. Right? I got more. I got other people who are responding. Exactly. And then we start just getting into the mentality. I'm going to try everything I can. And I'm going to try what the intention like Jason is. Hey, Jay, when do you want us to go see that property? I'm going to stick to the target. I'm going to be a little more straightforward. Right. Yeah. But if I've done that 10 times and they're just not moving, let someone else try it. Maybe a different voice. Maybe that person's not ready. Right. Or at least within those 10 times, you will know where they stand. Maybe it's a nurture. And now you can put it in the right bucket and you can decide, OK, this person probably is going to buy in six months. I'm going to continue nurturing. Right. Uh, one more step. Which team member is getting the most leads to respond? Dev, but Dev, you only had three leads, yeah. right? So, but 66% of your leads are responding. Let me see what they mean by response. Uh, a lead has responded if there is an incoming phone call, email response, or text message. 12% of leads responding by email, by phone. Okay, so this is the overall, and then it breaks it down, email, phone, text, right? Look at this, guys. Look at this stat. What's the highest stat? Which method of communication? Text, right? So you definitely want to call, but utilize the text. Text has like the highest open rate, right? People are going to see a text. And so if you call, they don't answer, send them a text right away. That should be in your process. Um, Mark, I'm going to get up for Mark in close second. But what's powerful about Mark is he has 22 leads and 60% basically are responding. And he has a lot more. A lot more leads right so this is great because this can tell a story you guys are also can go track this on your own if you look at reporting um but this tells the story of do i have enough leads first of all and then the leads that i have am i putting in enough work to convert them and get them to the next step right because these numbers will tell us where our problem is like i can see dev you probably don't have enough leads right i don't know we got this is new leads coming in then I got to look at what's in your CRM and kind of gauge those two, All right? Because just because he's not receiving a bunch of leads doesn't mean he doesn't have a full pipeline that he can work. But this will allow us to start, you know, peeling back a little bit, right? Um, this was which team members getting the most leads yeah. to respond. Okay. okay, so I know this is a lot, guys, a lot of things to think about. Hopefully you get, got your wheels turning today. But I would challenge you all to look at this as like a game that you're playing. These are the rules of the game. If I want to win in this game of real estate and business, sales in general, right? 
I got to call more often, right? I got to qualify people. I got to squeeze the juice. I got to be more direct, right? I got to stick to the mission, right? If the mission is ALM, don't go off tangent. If the mission is book an appointment, book the appointment. And then I got to use dialogue that gets the client to help me move them to the next step, asking questions like, what's the next step in your process to buy a home or to list your home, right? They're giving you the keys, right? They're giving you the cheat code of what you should do next by asking that question. That's how we can put all of these things together, right? Um, and most important, of, important guys is putting in the reps, right? Like we saw Mario say, you can condense that time frame if you put more reps and you put more effort in a shorter amount of time. Those are, those are all within your control, right? That's all I got, guys. Thank you. Great.